Please be seated. I warn you, this sermon is very different than any I've ever preached before. Normally, when a clergy person writes a sermon, they write it to the entire congregation. For the first time in my life, not the case. This sermon was written specifically for Alicia, for Max, for Justin. If you all get anything out of it, good for you. If not, oh well. <laughs> Using a prayer for the graduates, let us pray. Lord, we have knowledge. Show us now how to use it wisely. Find a way somehow to craft the world into a better place, make life, its challenges, easier to face. Grant us faith and courage and place purpose in our days. Teach us how to serve you in more effective ways. You gift us education, knowledge, and skill. May we find fulfillment as we seek to do your will. May we ever be aware in everything we do that knowledge comes from learning, but wisdom comes from you. Amen. This past week, Christians across America celebrated Ascension Day. 39 days always after Easter, always on a Thursday, the day remembering the reading we heard from Acts that remembers that moment when Jesus' friends witnessed Christ's bodily ascending into heaven. Our associate rector, who remember is new on the scene of this parish, asked if we had a special Eucharist that specific day. No, we don't, I responded. But I will say that the seminary I attended did. Ascension Day was quite an event. Everyone in robes and regalia parading around the chapel, massive clouds of incense. One year, though, Ascension Day was extra special. Worshippers exited the service, but unbeknownst to them, a student had bought a huge plastic Jesus statue, stuffed Jesus with an explosive rocket device, and as the liturgical parade marched into the courtyard, the student lit the fuse, sent Jesus soaring out of the shrubbery in cloud of smoke and sparks. Jesus went up, up, up and away, and then nosedived onto the nearby dormitory roof, where the ascension rocket finally sputtered and died. <laughs> Most, including me, who attended church that day, loved seeing Jesus bodily ascending. But since ascension, Jesus was a fire hazard. <laughs> the seminary dean was particularly missed. Today, we celebrate Ascension, the Ascension of three young people, Max, Alicia, Justin, moving onward and upward, graduating from high school, moving on to college, leaving a gaping hole in our acolyte core, rector taking applications now. <laughs> Graduates. I will not be strapping rockets onto your back and sending you upwards toward the church steeple, though I think you know me by now, and if I could gift you that experience today, would I ever? But keep two images in your head of the fire of Jesus lit inside you at birth and how you are God's rocket. We have watched 
to do over the years. Soar onward and upward in many ways. In height, in wisdom, in depth, in activity. And we, both your blood and your church families, have mixed emotions at this moment in time. Sure, 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 we're all supposed to be those mature adult furtherers, wanting the best for you, not worrying about ourselves, but I come from the lineage of Adam and Eve. I'm not perfect, I'm flawed, I'll name it, I'll proclaim it. I'm not thrilled about you leaving me behind. You know, I always tell people when someone leaves, you can replace the position, but not the person. And let's be blunt. Max, no one gives hugs like you. Justin, no one sings like you. And Alicia, no one cares and loves with as massive a smile as you. You're leaving, we're staying. What will we do without you? You know, today, the disciples are in the same jam as we are. Jesus is heading out, moving up. In John, we hear how Jesus started saying goodbye to his disciples three chapters ago. In John 14, I'm leaving, you're not. Thankfully now, in chapter 17, Jesus moves from saying, you're staying, to, I'm praying for you. Always, on the last Sunday of Easter, we hear a chunk of John 17, which is called the High Priestly Prayer, and you know, regularly we do hear in Scripture how Jesus goes off to pray, but it's very rare we hear what he prays, what he says. And today we did. And oh, to be like Jesus in John's Gospel, never afraid, game face on, always positive, super confident, bring on the cross and the nails, man, I'm ready. Jesus never talks and doubts at the same time in John that God is listening. Jesus knows God is. And Jesus says to God about his disciples, may they know you. M-A-J. Jesus' first prayer. For you, know God. Know God made you. Know there is no one else on the planet like you. Know God created you for a reason. Know God. See God in all things. And let me tell you, this isn't an easy task. You will have many dark days. And rotten things will happen all around you. They already have. And rotten things perhaps will even happen to you. And guaranteed there will be days when Jesus completely disappears out of sight. There'll be days when you wonder if he was ever actually there in the first place. But every day anyway, seek to know God as best you are able, and to re-quote Sting, every move you make, every breath you take, God is watching you. And I love this gospel because it reminds us that on the days we just can't pray, Jesus will do that job for us too. Max. Alicia, Justin, charge number two. Keep your core. 
Today we hear Jesus say about his followers, they have kept your word. Please note that the word word here is not the same word for the word word usually used in most parts of John. Have I confused you yet? Remember, most of the time in the Gospel of John, John's favorite word in Greek is logos. In the beginning was the logos, and the logos was with God, and the logos was God. But here, Jesus says something different. Jesus says, they... My followers have kept your ramata. In this case, John means keep your words. Keep the teachings, another translation of the word, you've been given. So, Max, Alicia, Justin, remember that who you are now, right at this moment in time, is because of all that's been poured into your soul up to this moment. The words, the teachings you've heard at home, at school, at work, at play, keep them. Don't ditch them when you move up. College, for sure, will change you in a myriad of ways, but don't let it change you where it matters most. Keep your core. Keep at base what makes you you, and this will be very difficult to do sometimes. I'm living that dream. Justin, keep your love of music, your charisma, your passion, the joyful noise you make unto the Lord, not only inside this church, but outside. And Alicia, keep your compassion, your confidence, your considerate ways. Keep the way that you image God in unconditional love. And Max, keep hugging people. Keep the blessing you possess to use your strengths not to diminish people but to build them up. The way you've tutored people and gifted them your strength. Continue to give strength to strength in others. Friends, keep your core. Don't let anyone else ever make you into something you're not. AMJ, last and final charge, belief. Friends, we hear Jesus say today, they have believed. Norman Vincent Peale, author of the book, The Power of Positive Thinking, and I might add, a rock star Methodist preacher, who grew his church, get this, from 600 to 5,000 people over a 52-year ministry in one place. He said this, When you get up in the morning, you have two choices, either to be happy or to be unhappy. Just choose to be happy. Be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind, talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet, make all your friends feel. There is something special in them. Be as enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own. Forget the past and its mistakes. Press on to the greatest achievements of your future. Spend so much time improving yourself, you have no time left to criticize others. Be too big for worry, too noble for anger. And finally, believe in yourself. Have faith in your abilities. Without a humble but reasonable confidence in your own powers, you cannot be successful or happy. Friends, there will be days when you will not want to believe anymore in yourself, in others, and most especially 
steadfastly in God, but wait those days out. Be the last man standing like John Wayne in the movies. No. Keep. Believe. A new day will dawn. Guaranteed, this is probably the longest sermon I have ever preached since arriving at Grace Episcopal, but Jesus took three whole chapters to say goodbye to his disciples. I have the right to do the same. <laughs> Several weeks ago, at our weekly Bible meeting, Lynn Marino shared a memory from her childhood how when she was young, she had a ton of annoying cousins. And she wondered if her Italian grandmother loved her best among them all. So she walked up to her grandmother and said, none of you love me more than all the others. And her grandmother replied, my heart has many windows. Max, Justin, Alicia. My heart has many windows. And the ones for you are wide open and beautiful. Justin, thank you for writing me the most beautiful letter, four pages long, hand-penned, I have ever received in my life on the night I became your rector. Alicia, thank you for hosting at a huge discount the best birthday party ever for my children. And I didn't have to do anything as a mom. Do you know how cool that was? Didn't even have to buy the cake. Thank you for modeling God's unfailing love and generosity to me. And Max. Thank you for giving me the perfect memory in my own heart of my son of that day when we came over to your house and he knelt down and he prayed over your injured foot. And I have in my image of my mind's eye forever of you bending down to hug one so small and you being so tall. Friends, know God's fire burns in you Keep and guard your ways all your days and believe in yourself as much as we do here and as much as God believes in you.